Hello, bonjour, and welcome to your new RT1 Exchange video, where we explore and taste the world of fine and rare wines. After navigating around and learning more about the different facets of the fine collectible wines from Bordeaux, as we did over the past few episodes, let's stay in France, just move a few hundreds of miles away from Bordeaux, but stay in fine wine and rare wines territory as we do here and embark on a journey sailing the knowledge and wonders in Burgundy. There are so many wonders at every corner of the region, in every village with different styles, white wines, the red wines, the Chardonnays, the Pinot Noir, with subtle differences in their expressions of every little corner, every little vineyard has a different expression, that it's going to take us about six episodes to cover it all but it should be a lot of fun. So make sure to stay tuned and subscribe to the RT Exchange channel. We're going to be looking at the variations of Chardonnays like Chablis versus Meursault or Puligny Montraché, how a Pomar is different from a Gevray Chambertin, for example. Some, we're going to be looking at some of the iconic producers like Romane Conti or Leroy. So this is going to be a fascinating voyage. So to get us started today, I want to give you an overview, a quick overview of the wines from Burgundy with some rather personal and insightful thoughts about this multifaceted wine region. Sure, we generally talk about Burgundy as one wine region, but there are very different areas with different wines. So let's start with covering those. This is your overview of fine Burgundy wine. Of course, there are mainly two types of Burgundy wines. Other regions are more complex. It's pretty straightforward here. You've got the white wines made from Chardonnays and the red wines made from Pinot Noir. Of course, you may argue that there's also the Cremons or Maligoté, a bit of Gamay here and there, but we'll skip those for here as they are more anecdotal in the world of fine wines. So straightforward, as I said, with two grapes doesn't mean simple or easy for producers. Two very important concepts to have in mind that I would like you to have in mind as a takeaway from this video that I think a lot of people don't think about in that way often enough. Those two grapes are obviously some of the most popular wine grape varieties around the world. Full stop. Chardonnay is the most popular white wine grape variety in the world by far. And Pinot Noir is towards the top reds together with Cabernet Sauvignon. But possibly the second most popular red wine grape variety, which is not a small thing. These two iconic grapes, guess what? They were bred selected in Burgundy. The Benedictine monks here were so obsessed with wine all through the Middle Ages that they gave birth to two of the most perfect grape varieties that the world has ever seen. That's how important Burgundy is in the world of wine. That's one. Because producers in Burgundy have only had those two grapes to focus on, they have had an extreme focus on revealing the small nuances of these two grapes in different areas, how each village gives a slightly different wine. And we'll cover the different styles of Chardonnays between Meursault and Pliny Montraché, or the different styles of Pinot Noirs between Von Romanet and Louis Saint-Georges, for example, in future episodes. So I'll leave those details for here for now, but I want you to sense that other areas have more grapes, which somewhat confuses things a little bit with blends. Here it's simple, making the best possible wine with two grapes, much more focused. And I'll even go as far as saying that it's in fact, perhaps even because the vignerons in Burgundy have wanted to have this focus on only the best quality wines, that they got rid of any distraction of any grape that they weren't using that wasn't giving the best possible wines. So Chardonnays and Pinot Noirs is all what they were interesting about. That's why we only have two here, right? Interesting thoughts, right? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. In any case, the Bourguignons, which is how we call Burgundy people in France, just like, yes, Boeuf Bourguignon. Yes, the Bourguignons have been obsessed with finding the best vineyards to make the best wines, the very best terroirs for each of the two grapes. 
In chapter 3 of this video, in a minute or two, we'll talk about the different subregions of Burgundy. In terroirs here, what I mean, I want to have a word on what wine growers in Burgundy refer to as the climas. In our next episode, we'll cover in detail the hierarchy in the classification system of Burgundy, how you have a regional appellation, then village, then premier cru, and grand cru at the top of the pyramid. So I'll leave those for now. But even within each of these categories, the producers here are so precise that they've subdivided their vineyards into climas, or areas that have significant enough differences to be named separately and made into different wines, different labels. This is how a village like Nuit Saint-Georges has about 40 different Premier Cru appellations. 40 appellations in one small village. Clima names that you'll actually find specified written on wine labels that are very different from one to the others. Burgundy is the wine region in the world that probably invented the concept of single vineyard, a concept that's been emulated all around the world since and now. It is both the most modern concept in terms of wine because everyone has been aiming for it over the past decade or so, and many top producers in the world transition to it now. But it's almost the most ancient of concepts here in Burgundy. They've been doing that for centuries and centuries. That's how much terroir matters here in Burgundy. And I want to keep it simple and short here for you for the geography of Burgundy as I don't want to lose you getting into too much details. This is just an overview. Also, I don't have access to a very detailed map to illustrate all the granularity and complexity of the geography. And a lot of people I know get overwhelmed by Burgundy. So I don't want you to feel overwhelmed by Yes, it is quite complex. There's many different villages because they have so many different terroirs. But I want you to have a few important aspects in mind as a takeaway regarding the geography of Burgundy. Number one, you must know the term Côte d'Or. Remember this one, very important. This is the heart of most of the finest wines in Burgundy. This is a strip of limestone rich soils on a very specific slope that is absolutely unique in the world. That's from the south of the city of Dijon to the north of the town of chalon sur saône The Côte d'Or has the most famous city, Beaune, in the center. To the north of Bonn is the Côte de Nuit, named after Nuit Saint-Georges village, and that's Pinot Noir territory with all of the top villages like Von Romane or Gevray Chambertin. To the south of Bonn is the Côte de Bonn, which is more Chardonnay territory with Meursault, the vineyards of Corton Charlemagne, Puligny, and Chassagne Morachet. Even though, even in the Côte de Bonn, some great Pinots are made as well like the Poma. Secondly, of course, Chablis is part of Burgundy, even though it's its own little island, its own little area, a little further apart from the rest of Burgundy. But obviously, some of the best Chardonnays in the world are made here. Again, on a relatively small patch of land with a unique limestone terroir. But different limestone, distinct from the one in the Côte d'Or, and we'll get back to this in future videos. Finally, there are two more sub-areas in Burgundy that are less famous and less prestigious, but very important nonetheless, for a grand total of five sub-regions in Burgundy. So those two are the Côte Chalonnaise and the Côte Maconnaise, both to the south of Burgundy. There are some great villages here as well, with villages like Mercure, Bussy, Givry, or even the village of Chardonnay itself. Yes, Chardonnay is a village, and it's there to the south of Burgundy. Very, very significant, right? So there isn't any top high-end Grand Cruz here, but this is the source of very great value wines in the area. This is a bit of your entry point in terms of pricing, your entry point to the wonders of the Burgundy wine and terroirs have to offer. So definitely worth having in mind as well. Next week we'll get into the details of Burgundy wine classification, specifically the Regional, Village, Premier Cru and Grand Cru appellation, so you are really clear about what they mean and why some wines in Burgundy are much more expensive than others. Later in the series, we'll also get into some iconic producers that you must know. So again, make sure to stay tuned and subscribe to the channel with notifications on, so you do not miss any single episode, and we keep the flow of knowledge and understanding of wine going for you. So because you've just subscribed, because I've been so very convincing, I will see you soon in the wonderful world of fine and rare wines.
Thanks for watching and I will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine. Cheers.